Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and this is our daily card reading for April 22nd, 2021. So today we have, you and your loved ones are safe, dear God and Archangel Michael, thank you for watching over me and my loved ones and you can name your loved ones. Please help me feel secure and at peace and fill me with faith so that I may focus on my priorities and enjoy a healthful, happy life. And then we have, prayer will help this situation. Dear God and Archangel Michael, and you can add in anybody else that you pray to, this says, such as Jesus, I ask for your divine intervention, describe the situation, I welcome your help and I trust and follow your guidance with gratitude and grace. I need a miracle and ask that you send one to me in this situation quickly. Thank you and amen. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about taking a situation, uh, taking the fear out of it, and really through prayer, raising your frequency. And I'm even getting this uh, feeling here that when we pray, and I've never gotten this before, but when we pray, that's exactly what we are doing. We're opening ourselves up to the light. We're opening ourselves up to receiving. Again, the solution may not look the way you want or the way that you expect it to, but that doesn't mean that it's not for the highest good of everyone involved. Especially if it, if like you could come back and argue and say, oh my gosh, how could you say it turned out like this? How dare you say that my prayers were answered? But they were. Once again, things may not happen the way we think they should. Okay. But the takeaway here is some of you are really looking for a miracle. And, you know, this is absolutely saying this is available to you. Open your heart. It's, and they're even saying too, it, the problem isn't about humans asking for the miracle or praying or, um, you know, throwing out whatever their concerns are and, and giving them over to God. But this is an issue with people being closed off to receive. And they're actually giving me the imagery of the prayer comes out of like, almost like a, a speaker, like a small speaker. Yes, it goes out, <laughs> gets carried up to heaven, however you want to see that. But the rest of you is in stone block. Not that divine energy can't get through that. But remember what we say about the angels, they can't interfere with human free will. So if you're in a mode of not receiving, and a mode of not receiving and the, the stone walls can come from very deeply embedded conditioning that you're not even aware of anymore. That's why we say go back and work on that. <laughs> Open that up and see what comes up for you. But because we're functioning from that place, the blessings can't come in. We literally, through our doubt, don't allow good things to come to us. And we go back to worrying because if we keep an eye on the bad stuff, it can't get us. Or we can be prepped for it if it tries. And we're being invited to switch our thinking. There need be no blocks to accepting gifts from the universe. Miracles from God. However you see that. There doesn't need to be... Yeah, because they're coming in here and saying... There, there doesn't have to be any reservation about accepting. And... That's what it comes down to. I want this, but if I get it, then what? I want this, but if it comes in, yeah, they're saying that people will respond to reciprocity. So if I accept this, then I have, something's going to go away. And that is part of the block of not accepting because people are happier in their, or, well, they're more comfortable with, I don't know if they're happier, but they're more comfortable with being in their current discomfort than seeing what reciprocity might come from receiving a miracle. That's an interesting thing to think about. I don't know that I would have ever <laughs> realized that. You know what I mean? So I think that's a good message for everybody out there. We have to be in a space where we lay down the doubts. We know that we are fine to receive. We don't have to worry about something bad happening because something good happened, right? Okay, what do we have here? We have Zadkiel again, Michael, protection, clarity, all that good stuff. Gabriel, nurturance, messenger. You know, the big message here is look at how you function when you ask for something. 
Do that for you as an individual, okay? Because everyone's story is going to be different. Beauty and time. This verse feels like time is an illusion. And this is very connected to Gabriel. So this is beauty and communication, beauty and creation. Some of you might be getting pregnant. I can put that out there. Um, now, if you were somebody who's sitting there and you've been, you know, dealing with issues of fertility, these are general readings. And even if you got a personal reading with me, I'm going to lay it down for you. There's the energy of the baby soul. That's baby souls. Aw. Um, <laughs> a baby soul coming in your frequency, whoever you're parenting with, or if you're doing this on your own, you know, there's your frequency and the child's frequency and all of it has to line up. And at any point, I know there are plenty of readers out there that won't tell you this. I'm going to lay it down for you. At any point, the baby soul could go, nope, not the right environment and go back out. That soul has a contract as well. Or you, let's say you're the one who's trying to get pregnant. You can get into a fear mode. And maybe you're not even aware of it because in your brain, you're like, no, 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 no. I want to be a parent. I want to be a parent. I want to be a parent. But somewhere in your body, there could be a, another timeline. I, I don't see past lives, you know, in a linear way. I don't see it as the past necessarily. I see all of our timelines looping around one another because time isn't actually linear. Um, but there could be another timeline where you're experiencing labor. And if those lines intersect... You might not be conscious of the fear of pain or the fear of what your body's going to go through, but it's embedded in you somewhere. And that can pose as a block. That can become a block. So be aware of that. <laughs> and that's why, you know, if when people come to me and they're asking fertility questions, I will give it to you real. And I'll say, okay, the energy is good right now. You're 75% of the way there. There's nothing else that you can do. The other 25% is meant to be a wild card based on, you know, it depends on the individual, but, you know, based on the soul's contracts or whatever. This is where we see, um, you know, a baby soul is about to come in. You are creating the vessel. Uh, and then this is where miscarriages come from, at least as I am receiving this information. You take it for whatever it's worth. Um, and the soul doesn't go anywhere. The soul's still there. You just, you're not in the perception of that soul necessarily for some of you. Um, and the baby soul will return potentially if it's part of the soul's contract and there are better conditions. So you see what I'm talking about? We can go really deep into that, but there's part of it. And then of course there is, if you are doing this with a partner, there is the energy of the partner as well. I've had couples come to me and say, what is holding us up from conceiving? My husband's completely on board. No, he ain't. Nope. What he won't even admit to himself is that he has deep insecurities about being a father. And yet he's trying to convince himself that this is what he wants. Okay. I say all of this. Some of you have tuned out because you're like, I'm not having a baby. Well, then you're missing out. Okay. <laughs> we have Gabriel here and that was definitely coming out. If you're not looking to get pregnant, you can apply this to anything you're trying to give birth to. If you have um, a book, let's say, that you're trying to write and you start to have doubts and fears, the energy and the light of that work goes right out of it. It's sort of, if you want to see it as deactivating, <laughs> it deactivates. Okay. Or if you, you know, this could come from outside sources as well, but you know, we start to get into the whole, like, um, somebody putting a curse on you and, and all of that. It's all energy and people throwing energy at one another and whoever is trying to put a bad energy on you, you have just as much power to not let it get to you. Like literally it's like, I don't know where I'm coming up with this example, but throwing a tomato at a glass window right? And it just slides right off. Like <laughs> it doesn't have to hit you if you don't want it to. So whatever you're trying to give birth to, have courage and try not to get into that lower frequency because it will stop your progress. So that was a big message. Anyway, back to the cards here. <laughs> you and your loved ones are safe. Prayer will help with this situation. 
If you're just feeling fearful in life, I've heard a lot of people say that they're dealing with anxiety and I am not a mental health care practitioner. I am not qualified to be giving advice in that area. Please check with an expert. From a spiritual perspective, when you understand the frequency that's pulsing through you and you know, like I can pray and I can raise my frequency, this is where you're going to perhaps with the proper amount of help here, find some of that dissipating. There are plenty of stories out there where people have really been helped through meditation for their anxiety. Again, I am not diagnosing anybody. I'm not offering a treatment. Check with an expert. If you're like, why do you keep saying this? Because you would be amazed at, uh, and that's not like a victim, but like there's a little bit of a witch hunt going on still. People don't like what we're saying. And that's too bad because we're only getting stronger. <laughs> Bring it out in the comment section. Let me hear your voices. So we are going to leave it there, guys. I am sending you all so much love and take care. Bye-bye.